This video here is understanding the history and purpose of Markdown. Why would you even need Markdown? And somebody, as somebody, Ronnie, very wisely said, why not just stick to the thing that's the most common and the most popular? That's exactly what we're going to do. Um, and it's very, it's very important that you understand that about this approach to learning Markdown because Markdown is one of these technologies that started out as a good idea and then went in it like expanded like crazy and there's so many fractions factions sorry uh, and split it and forks and everything of the language that for a beginner they can get very confused not to mention the fact that markdown isn't even taught anywhere raise your hand if you've been taught markdown raise your hand if you've been taught officially you've been taught markdown in any course whatsoever they do not cover it they do not cover Markdown. It's one of these things that you're expected to just pick up. And yet it's the critical way of writing in pretty much every single technical role whatsoever. And let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about how Markdown has permeated the whole world. Okay. So Markdown at this current time, we'll talk about the history, but at this current time, Markdown is used everywhere. If you're writing Slack messages, you're you slack right you when you want to put italics around something you're using markdown um unfortunately webex and some of the other technologies decided not to use markdown and to invent their own you know syntax or way of you know doing highlighting and stuff so let's do a little bit about the history of markdown in fact let's let's go ahead and ask chat gpt what chat gpt says and um so this is chat gpt uh let's do a clear here uh, what is the history of Markdown? Actually, let's use capital M, which is the official, oh gosh, <laughs> uh, Mark, Mark one, Markdown. You took CS203 Markdown? CS203. <laughs> and why are we not learning restructured tests, right? All right. This is, these are all good questions. Um, Okay, so let's see what ChatGPT says. Let's see if it's right. Um, Markdown is a lightweight markup language used for formatting plain text. Okay. By the way, what is a markup language? A markup language is a language that uses other symbols or words um, to change the presentation of the language. And some of you are, you are really, really old if you want to date yourself here. If you go back to... Uh, ancient times, uh, I'm going to say it, TextMate. So when computers first came out, we all we had was the terminal, right? And if you wanted to emphasize something, you put stars around it, right? The little asterisk stars around it. Uh, if you wanted to underline something, you put a little, you know, underline symbols around it. Uh, not SGML, hell no. <laughs> this is way before that was even invented. Um, but, you know, word processors back in the day were perfect it included i'm really dating myself here but at the time if you wanted that kind of thing before it even made it to your printer um you would you know to to have italics you would do a thing to it it was there wasn't at the time you couldn't even use a mouse i know that's how i'm really dating myself right but markdown in many ways is that it you go all the way back to marking up text so you mix text with something else but let me just show you as you can see we're, this is actually the text of the Skillstack website right now. And this is an example of what we mean by this. So by putting, we're going to go through all the syntax here, but by putting a hashtag here or formally an Octothorpe, we can say that this thing here is a title. And so when we go to the website, we can go see uh, the title. So here it is it rendered. This is the same document I'm working on right now. You can see it's been rendered as a title. And then he puts an Octothorpe there. Um, and you can see the first thing here. You can see these bullet points. And then look, it's actually automatically numbering them. So this is an example of Markdown. And it's also an example of a markup language. A markup language is a language that is textual that allows the use of other symbols to create special meaning. What are What's up with all the ones over here? We're going to talk about that, right? That symbolizes the beginning of an ordered list. And, and not a numbered list, an ordered list. So these brackets around this indicate that this is a, a link. And this here is the URL that would that'll be, you know, your web browser would use when you click on it. Okay. So this here, this, this, that's what we mean by markup languages. So let's continue to read. So 
uh, mark down, which is obviously a play on the term mark up, uh, was created by John Gruber and Aaron Schwartz in 2004 with the goal of allowing people, oh, thank you for that, uh, uh, allowing people to write using an easy to read and easy to write plain text format, optionally convert, optionally convert it to structured valid XML, H HTML, which we're going to learn. You're like, why aren't we learning HTML first? Because Markdown's easier, and we'll talk about this. John Gruber, a writer and tech blogger. This is so important, my friends. Markdown was invented by a writer. HTML was invented by a scientist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it it's becomes really obvious, right? Because, so, Markdown was invented by John Gruber, who wanted basically a language to be as readable as possible, arguing that users should be able to understand the language without the help of tags and other formatting features found in more complex languages like HTML, which somebody mentioned, HTML was the original scientific, very crazy language that only, you know, scientists with a certain degree could understand. And to this day, HTML is still pretty hard to understand. Let me show you, just to inspect element on your web page. this is HTML, my friends. Do you think the average person could come in here and read this and understand it? Nope, they cannot. So what can they understand? This, this is what they can understand and they can write even with a text-based editor. Okay, so that was the purpose behind John Gruber and here's good old Aaron Schwartz. The, the Beginner Boost is dedicated in part to Aaron Schwartz who at 15 has done many amazing things. There's a whole video about him. John Gruber coordinated with Aaron Schwartz, a renowned computer programmer for co founding social media and Reddit. Thank you for that follow. Um, uh, contributing to the development of RSS, his activism is everything. Aaron was also involved with the Gruber, with John Gruber in the creating of the, these people. The, the bottom line, these writers wanted a way to write quickly and that could easily be translated into a web page. And they did not want to write HTML. And, this year, this is the first year, we're going to learn Markdown first before we learn HTML. And then we're going to learn HTML from the conversion of Markdown into HTML, which you'll then be able to see. In fact, Markdown is a really great way to get the idea of mixing markup, you know, using markup in a, in a human-friendly way before you jump into the more, much more complicated world of HTML. Not many people do it this way. I'm glad we're doing it this way. So Markdown has been adopted by many platforms as a text-to-HTML conversion tool. It's used by writers and developers of websites like GitHub, Stack Overflow, Reddit, Slack. In fact, uh, oh, damn, party of three, welcome. Okay, so in fact, the Markdown variant, I'm making a video right now, so I'm just going to keep going. In fact, the Markdown variant used by GitHub, known as GitHub Flavored Markdown, introduced syntax for task lists, tables, as well as many other features useful in software documentation. I regularly use these task lists in my pull requests for GitHub. And um, as you can see, they're known for GitHub as GitHub Flavored Markdown. Um, we mentioned in the overview video that we will be getting into specifically GitHub flavored markdown because it is the most useful. It is the most widely adopted, even though it is an extension to the common mark standard, which we will get to. We're going to talk about all of that very soon. Right now, we're just talking about the history. So the simplicity of markdown uh, has contributed to its increasing popularity as many web writers and developers integrate into their workflow. How, however, as usage has grown, so too have a number of markdown flavors, often leading to issues with consistency and compatibility. Uh, despite this, markdown remains widely used and a well-loved tool. Um, and I can attest to this. I have de you know, deployed lots and lots of documentation in my, in my day, uh, including our current enterprise. Uh, I deployed both of our enterprise internal and external facing um, user documentation for the company, for the job, um, the, the, and I got, you know, I got accolades from, from people at, at senior levels of management for, for promoting the use of, of a very easy to, to use, uh, documentation platform at work. Um, documentation is at the core of, of any technical job and knowing Markdown is a critical skill. Uh, I would say for being able to do anything else, uh, from the beginning, from just even communicating, um, with emphasis, um, using tools like Slack and, and other, other tools. And, um, uh, what's, what's the other one besides Slack? I can't remember. Um, uh, what's the one besides Slack? 
Discord. Discord does it too. Discord and Slack both do the same thing. Um, yeah, and we'll talk about there. There've been other, um, definitely other markup, markdown, Markov. Yeah, funny. Okay, so so that's the history. The history is Mr. Gruber wanted to make something that he could write really easily, and a lot of times he was converting an email into a website. And you'll, we'll notice that when we get into Markdown, you'll see remnants of email, old school 1980s email inside of Markdown. So that's what we'll do next.